Welcome back to the Anxiety Hacks podcast. This is the place we talk about everything to do with mental health and well-being. My name's Liv Redman. And I am Gabby Ramos. In today's episode, we interview Cayman Islands' first Olympic gymnast, Regan Ruddy. Regan has an amazing story of courage and determination, as well as a wonderful attitude. Today, Regan shares her journey and struggles with mental health alongside being a professional athlete. So how did you begin? Like, how like did you decide to become an athlete? So when I was about four years old, um, my older sister did gymnastics. And uh, being the annoying younger sister, I had to do everything she did. And I just enjoyed it a lot because I could flip around, get out a bunch of energy and go crazy and in a controlled environment. Um, and then I just kind of progressed from there. But that's like the very beginning. Oh, so, cool. it's so where are you located right now? So I'm in Gainesville, Florida, because I go to the University of Florida. Um, so, yeah, I'm, at, I'm in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, I gotcha. And like, I, I'm just really curious, like how, like, how did you, the training, like, how's the training system, I guess, uh, to become, to go, to get to where you are right now? So it was a lot. Um, I obviously started in the Cayman Islands um, and I was there from when I was four, I trained in Cayman um, from four to about 14. And then I kind of exceeded the level that the gym could provide for me because obviously as you progress more in gymnastics, the skills get harder and more dangerous. And um, there wasn't, for example, a foam pit uh, and there wasn't coaches that could properly spot me. So mm -hmm. I moved to Texas and I started living with host families. So my family and everyone was still in Cayman and I trained between five and seven hours a day, um, five to six days a week. Oh my so God. It, it was always, it's, it's like nonstop. It's not like, oh, do something, take a break. Like we were allowed to sit down, stuff like that. So it's a lot. Yeah. So you were doing that from 14. I mean, that's a lot of pressure to be putting on yourself from such a young age to be training like six <laughs> hours a day. My God. No, exactly. It was a lot of pressure, not only training because um because gymnastics is such a demanding sport um mm. physically mentally and everything so obviously you put pressure on yourself coaches put pressure on you because they have high expectations but then the pressure of also representing a country is a lot as well yeah because that's huge and I wanted to touch a little bit on a, a little bit on that because the Cayman Islands I mean I, I hadn't heard about it, <laughs> about the Cayman <laughs> Islands until I'd started this job, actually. But, um, you know, from the sounds, it's quite a small island and you have yes. family there. What, what was it like growing up and getting into gymnastics there? So Cayman has about 60,000 people. Um, there's three <laughs> islands. I live, I'm from East End on Grand Cayman, which is kind of... Um, like you could say like the countryside or like the suburbs of like America that's how you right. can like kind of compare it. it's very quiet everything like that very naturalistic if that's a word <laughs> but um I grew up in my um as well as a businessman my father was also a fisherman so water and spending time on the water was a huge part of my childhood and just being outside I always say it's the best place to grow up just because the people um the environment and everything like that it's just it's so safe and it's just very protected in many different ways so I loved it it sounds yeah, wonderful that's... like the perfect child <laughs> <laughs> but you know I like obviously you know we're gonna get into um your you know the whole topic of your mental health but you know starting so young I can imagine like the pressure that people put on you like did you start or do you think you started experiencing like anxiety or stuff like that when you were young like did you like so, go through that you know phase that sometimes athletes go through right um so I always remember being super anxious and nervous for me it's even as a little girl 
Um, and then when I moved away from Cayman and started going through that period, like it was really hard for me to even start moving away. I, um, and I left and started training in Texas. And before even actually going there, anytime someone said the word Texas, I would have a panic attack. And like, mm-hmm. and I just like break down, cry, like it was crazy. But then eventually I actually started liking training in Texas and progressing and everything. But I, I really did struggle a lot being anxious just because being away from family and my home and everything. Um, and like I said, the pressure of training, it was, it was a lot to deal with. Mm. Oh my God. Cause I was just going to say on that. I mean, the, the Cayman Islands and Texas, from what I hear in the news, uh, are yeah. two very yeah. different places, you know? So yeah. um, how has that kind of impacted or how did, how do you think the panic attack started surrounding just Texas itself? So like, it's, it was a huge culture shock mm, um, just because it is a lot different than Cayman. You know, they say everything bigger, everything's bigger in Texas or something like that. And mm. it's definitely true. Like, it's just massive. And like the gyms are massive and the girls are all about gymnastics and everything and the coaches. And there was a lot of times, like for me, like my anxiety and everything like shows up in a lot of my sleep. Like I just won't go to sleep at night or I mm. like, can't fall asleep or stay asleep. And I really noticed when I was about 14 um, that that was happening and that I just could not sleep at night in Texas and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What did you do to like? Took melatonin. (laughs) Oh. If I'm being honest. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I had to take melatonin if I wanted to fall asleep a lot of times, but I really started getting into journaling and that helped just because I could get any thoughts that were going on in my brain keeping me up I could get them down and out um I'm also very religious so I would pray and everything like that and just kind of try to get through it that's good did you like experience um you know like peer pressure or like bullying when you sort of moved to Texas and like I'm sure you started meeting other people like peers that trained with you. Like, did you ever experience that? So um, obviously kind of being an outside, uh, the new girl and especially from a different country, uh, there was a period of time where I definitely did feel a little bit of an outsider. Um, I, I didn't always train at one gym. I had a, um, there was a period of time where I had to go to a different gym with different coaches just because of, a host family I was living with and at that gym I got bullied but um and that really affected me a lot but I figured out a way um and I actually started living with a different family just so I could go back to my old coaches that I had originally in Texas mm-hmm. that I think sucks. yeah that's a huge thing like in terms of uh you know the environment that you're in if you're if yes. you've got people around you that are you know like you say bullying you and even like having coaches that that may not understand the whole social aspect of what's going on at the gym. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if that was the case, but I, I kind of right. went through something similar um, in the sport I do. And yeah, I, I just want to know, I suppose, how that was for you being so young, being able to go to someone and say, hey, look, I think I need to go to another. I need to go back to my old gym with my old coaches. How did that uh, play so- out? So the original coaches, their names are Johnny and Eddie. And Eddie's like the one that took me to the Olympics and all of that. Um, Mm -hmm. So they moved gyms and it was kind of across the um, city. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I was still with my, one of my host families and I lived with four host families total, but they were going to a different gym. Um, So I started going to that gym just because I was living with them and everything like that. And Mm -hmm. it was getting so bad. And I tried to talk to my mom about it, but obviously being in a different country and just going off of what I was saying, she couldn't really grasp the, uh, what am I trying to find? What's the word I'm looking for? The level, the the level of um, the magnitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) She couldn't really understand the extremes of it all. And Mm. like just the whole environment and what I was going through until she came. And then once she came and kind of saw how things were like at the gym um, and how I was kind of shutting down, not being myself at all is when she really realized, okay, we do need to make a difference and 
make an effort to try and somehow get back to Johnny and Eddie. So mm-hmm. then I started training with Johnny and Eddie and I would um, carpool with a girl that lived kind of close to me. And then eventually I just moved out um, to a different host family in the same area. Nice. Mm-hmm. So then it all worked out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah were you ever tempted to quit to go back and oh, be like oh, oh you know. all the time um <laughs> gymnastics is definitely a sport where a lot of times there's more hate than love it's, people say like love hate relationship there was many times for me when it was more hate than love but um mm-hmm. I knew that I there was a quote that I read when I was like going through it um and it said don't come this far to only come this far Mm-hmm. and made me realize you know I can't really give up now just because of my current situation I need to keep forward to make a better future so that's what really got mm-hmm. me through wow. it just yeah, sucks because changed. you know I can relate a little bit to feeling homesick because um, I moved to the states when I was like 17 right after mm-hmm. high school um, yeah and because I was under age you know, I had to live that portion, that like year, it was a little bit less than a year, but I had to live with a host family. So yeah. the first time I arrived, my mom dropped me off of, at their house. They were very nice people, but I just like felt so out of place. Yeah. I remember that you night. Feel like a stranger <laughs> in someone's home. Yeah. And I was like sitting in the bed, looking at the walls and I was like, I want to go back. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I have school like I, I just want to go back and my mom you know at the time she was just trying to be very empathetic but it's such a unique experience to just be so far from home and for me the language was different because I, I speak Spanish and the culture everything you know and on top of that um, the first year it was really hard for me to make friends because again it was like this culture shock you know I like I was yeah. very new to me. <laughs> yeah I can't imagine yeah so um obviously you know not just pressure in general for like being the best but uh people and this is something that I discussed with a friend that was um you know when I was in college she was also doing gymnastics um she talked about body image Is this mm-hmm. something that you like struggled with or struggle with, uh, you know, obviously when you compete, when you're going to present yourself uh, as mm-hmm. an athlete, people are also looking at that. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience? Yeah. So obviously when you're a kid, you don't really think about your body and everything like that. But mm-hmm. as you like grow older and like, it was more of when I was about probably like between like 16 and 18 or more 16 and 17 but obviously like stays in the back of your mind like because we wear our tiny little leotards and we just have to prance around and always look pretty and you know sometimes you're like bloated or whatever <laughs> it was like mm-hmm. <laughs> that was hard and um when I was going through that tough time when I was struggling um I definitely struggled like eating because I was so concerned about my body image and just also like depression was making it hard to eat mm-hmm. um but I always I, I remember um I was training like five hours a day and there were some times before practice I would just eat a handful of Cheerios just mm-hmm. because I was like gotta burn it gotta burn it which obviously like isn't healthy but um yes I definitely did struggle with body image as a gymnast and then obviously like after um you know you train your whole life and you're in the best shape possible even if you don't see it like you're ripped everywhere stuff like that and then after it's like okay like okay now I'm like growing again and now things are changing so even not always like it's not just during but even after my gymnastics career even struggling with it Mm, yeah was there ever pressure coming from your trainers to look good or anything like that or no they were always really adamant about feeling your body properly obviously like wanting us to eat healthy but they would never said anything about our um weight and or anything like that they were always really good they didn't make us like weigh ourselves or anything like that or make any sort of comments like nothing of that sort Yeah, amazing. So that was good. It's, 
Yeah, that that is good. And it, it, it's something I actually haven't heard. I mean, I just maybe like a month or so ago, I had watched some horrible documentary. I can't remember what it was called, but it was on Netflix and it was surrounding that doctor or whatever in the state. Oh, in the state. oh yeah. Yeah, yes, that's one. Um, yeah. And it was pretty, it was pretty hard to watch. I mean, so I, I was um, an up and coming snowboarder in my <clears throat> little island for a while. And, uh, you know, it's a bit different with snowboarding because we're not obviously in, in leotards, we're in like bulky <laughs> jackets and right. you know, padding and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I don't think I ever really had a huge issue with my own body image in, in that sense mm. at the time. Um, but definitely there were things about the sport that made me feel like I should be not eating right. what I want or, or mm-hmm. you know, trading harder or whatever. And actually, I think surrounding that, there was a, you know, a lot of guys in the, in the industry who don't have to think about things like their periods yeah. or their hormones and how that's going to affect no, their performance really. that time, you know? So <laughs> how did you learn to deal with that? Was, um, you know, your hormones and things ever taken seriously when it comes to training? Like, how does it change? So- obviously girls get extremely emotional and Mm. sometimes you just have a bad practice and it just happens to be that time of the month and it's like the worst thing ever because all of a sudden one bad turn feels like the end of the world and everyone's all against against you and then Mm. a week goes by later and it's like oh wait that actually wasn't that big of a deal why was I like overreacting Mm. um (laughs) but for me um it was hard because obviously like being on your period and everything like that and being in a leotard and like we couldn't wear shorts so it was always like running to the bathroom to make sure we used to have a code word um like me and my teammates um and if you said that word they would check to make sure that you had like no things on your leotard oh that's that's sweet it's hot yeah we were we were were tight knit (laughs) yeah Gosh, I didn't oh, even Lord. think about that aspect of it. Like, oh my God, imagine. Oh, yeah. I couldn't. And I you're couldn't. like flipping and splitting. It's very terrifying. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so what yeah, do you do? Was- because, you know, there are people like my friend, for example, one of my best friends, like she has like a really like heavy, heavy flow. Mm-hmm. And I've known this since high school, you know. Uh, whereas for me, like it's, I don't even worry about it, honestly. First of all, I have PCO, so I barely have, you know, yeah. periods sometimes. But um, like, how do you handle that when you are like, you know, there's like one day that, that where it's like you have the heaviest flow. It's like the hardest yes. day where you have the heaviest or the most painful cramps. Like, how do you deal with that? Like, what do you do? Do you not just practice or do you like? Take- oh, no, you can't miss practice. We always still want to practice. Oh but, my God, um, boy. So we were always like in a pain just because of gymnastics and like constant pounding. So Advil, taking Advil was like no big deal. Um, and obviously taking extra precautions. Um, but uh, we just always had to just deal with it. <laughs> like we just yeah. always, at, because for us, like you train, like it's a competition. So like, no matter what you take every day as if it's a competition and like sometimes it was a competition when you were on your period. So at least you had the practice of dealing with it at practice, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because okay. I guess you can't really time yeah. Oh no, you hormones can't and, and, and the and the Olympic Games or whatever. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Luckily, you can't cancel either. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. I imagine that you guys build like such a you know sisterhood sort of environment because Mm -hmm. it's like I imagine you know girls looking after each other you know like Mm -hmm. hey let me take a quick look or are you good like do you need a tampon I don't know (laughs) yeah no sure um I always say the girls I trained with although some gymnasts are extremely competitive take their gymnastics to the whole other level but other ones I always say they're like my best friends for life it's just a different kind of bond rather than school or anything like that because as um like you see each other at your highest of highs and your lowest of lows you know Mm. crying getting like yelled at going through a rough practice but you're always there for each other no matter what it's nice Mm. it's real Mm -hmm. special it's the best memories (laughs) yeah training with teammates and everything like that 
Mm-hmm. That's and so in terms of those teammates and things and going to the Olympics, like how, uh, I guess I, I haven't really experienced this, but being friends with people you're competing against, like how does that change your relationship depending on where you are? So I never trained with anyone I was competing with just because I was the only gymnast from Cayman representing Mm. Cayman everyone I trained with in Texas was competing for the club so for me I never had to compete against them which was nice wow that yeah that is nice that's right yeah it was always they were representing the U.S. per se and you were representing your own country pardon so when you were training with your peers like they were representing sort of like their club or the U.S. I guess and you were representing your country so there was like no rebel I guess is that what right. you're saying right so for like gymnastics you either represent club or if you're on the national team that's when you represent the mm. USA for example so they okay. they were just doing club so it wasn't even like a international okay, competition gotcha. <laughs> yes nice. yeah that's nice at least there's yeah. no like tension you know like no we're exactly. friends but we're enemies we're frenemies <laughs> no, it was like, I no it was never like that that's cool <laughs> Um, yes, so definitely. how was your time at the Olympics how did you find the last one I, I just admittedly went and watched your your run on uh, on YouTube before doing the interview today it was quite impressive thank you um I it was it's like a a dream because you know it's everything that I'd ever wanted and everything I'd ever worked for um and then it comes true one day and you look back and it's like trying to remember a dream like, oh, that really did happen. Mm-hmm. I think I was like in La La Land the whole time. I was just like <laughs> smiling and like laughing and just like enjoy myself. And for me, that was my main goal is obviously I wanted to do good. You know, no one ever wants to fall at the Olympics, but stuff happens. But for me, I can just look back and just be happy because I was happy in that moment. And I just wanted to put it all out there. Whatever happens, happens. But I knew that I wanted to make the most of it in a mental, emotional way and just be happy the whole time. So it was like a positive thing rather than, oh, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. Yes, I wish that I like never fell. But at the same time, I can't look back and say, oh, I wish that I had a better attitude because I can't do that because I was like smiling the whole time. (laughs) So I was happy. It was a happy experience. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Your family go with you? My mom was able to go with me because she's kind of like, my manager if you we say momager like kim kardashian or whatever <laughs> but um because she kind of does like some of the paperwork and so she kind of helps with that because it was just me and my coach and there's other meetings that were happening at practice that obviously he couldn't go to and it was just like little logistic stuff like that that she would take care of cool That's yeah cool so in terms of that, the Olympic moment, because I suppose like, God, if I went, I wouldn't get out if I fell or anything. <laughs> I think no one, do you, do you feel like you ever can be a hundred or well, a thousand percent happy with a run? Like, I feel like there's always this pressure, even as an athlete who hasn't gone to the Olympics, but like going to certain competitions, even when I did well, I always have this memory of me being like, oh, but I wish I'd done that. Yeah. Or do you get so, that every time or? All the time. I mean, there's always something to improve. Unless you get a 10, then and that like never happens. But um, for example, I remember at 2019 World Championships, I hit four for four, which means I never fell on anything, didn't fall on any events. But um, I was still like, oh, I did better in practice. And I think you just have to learn that stuff is going to happen. But Um, and Eddie, my coach told me this was, he said, you know, if you go to a competition and you fall, you can't be disappointed in yourself. If you know that you put everything into it, you trained as hard as you possibly could made all the sacrifices. If you know, you did everything you had to do to get there. You can't be upset at the outcome. Totally. So so true. That's a hard lesson to learn, but it's a important lesson. If you don't want to just like beat yourself up all the time. Mm. yeah I mean, it obviously is easy to give the advice you know but when you are going through it oh, yeah. like, like I'm saying you have right to now like, like really this, 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 but like in reality it was so hard <laughs> yeah yeah and it, I suppose it's a bit different because like um I mean when you're training and stuff and you're learning these new tricks like there's always that feeling of once you've learned a new trick it's like oh my god I've got this oh yeah and I 
I feel like when you're doing a competition, it's a snapshot of a moment. It's like a snapshot of like a practice moment. So no matter like how you perform in the competition, like it never fully reflects like how you are outside of the competition. You know what I mean? No, Unless exactly. You, yeah. You always want the competition to reflect the best parts of practice and you always want, you know, all of your practice to lead up to a perfect performance. Like that's the goal. So mm. that's why we always say practice how you're going to compete. So that when you go out and compete, it's hopefully like what you do in practice all the time. <laughs> mm, that's mm. a good quote. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. <heard> so that <laughs> when, so you said you also went through depression and mm-hmm. like, did you seek therapy counseling to to sort of help you deal with those um you know emotions or is this something that you like sort of battled alone and hoped you know for the best so um I did a lot of it by myself and then on my 17th birthday I actually went to therapy and Mm -hmm. that helped a lot and made me realize that not all of my issues were stemming from gymnastics per se she was a sports psychologist but a lot of it was other things going on Um, But yes, I did go to therapy and then started journaling and everything like that. And that's what helped a lot, the combination of everything. But I never took like um, medicine or whatever. I was Mm. too scared too. (laughs) Yeah, I think it it is a big decision, I suppose. And um, me and Gabby have been talking about this over the last couple of weeks uh, with, you know, various other people and ourselves. Uh, we've both kind of been through depression and uh, Gabby, you, I don't think you've been on medication before, but was that right? No, so, no. no, no, I've, I haven't. Yeah. I've gone on and off them. Uh, and that, that was, it's been quite difficult, like, especially with the sports that you do. And I think, you know, um, depression and antidepressants have a little bit of a stigma but I've never fully thought about their effects on sport um I know you said you haven't taken them but do you think that that's why like did it always scare you in the sense of like how it could or would affect your performance um I would I think I was just scared of maybe like other side effects and Mm. just because um it's a it's almost like a big deal and it was my a big deal in my head to like start them like you said it's like a commitment and an important mm-hmm. issue and I didn't want to feel like I had to rely on something to help me I wanted to learn how to help myself obviously some mm-hmm. people have to take them and like that's completely fine just personally I didn't think that that was the best solution for my situation yeah mm-hmm. it's cool it's very inspiring especially like um when you're going through quite like emotionally or challenging times like the Olympics mm-hmm. you know, of course it's like these happy moments or you know competitions are always kind of like a positive thing right but right. I suppose um you know god I I remember like being at the start of runs and just like wanting to throw up in my gear oh yeah there was never a competition <laughs> I didn't feel like throwing up and passing out at yeah I'm sure I'm sure yeah that was always nerve wracking said- yeah you said you journal a lot. Do you have any tips? Like, what do you do? Like, do you like mm. just, you know, share your thoughts? Do you like make lists of like, for example, like gratitude lists? Like what exactly do you do when you journal? Because you can go so you I, know, around it like in many ways, you know? Yeah. So I think I would probably, I've done every sort of thing. Um, at first, like when I first started like going to therapy and if I was like going through a really tough time, like you said, I would do five things I was grateful or five good things a day, I always say. So I'd write down, even if it was the worst day ever, I would somehow find five good things to write about in a day. And um, my therapist like explained in a scientific way of like the chemicals it can release, but also it just changed my perspective of, okay, maybe things aren't as bad as I'm making them. And that I do have control of how I view the world and my situation and that everything is just a matter of how I react. So Mm. I did that. I would also just write about what I was feeling if I needed to, cute little mood trackers. I used to be very artistic with it. Now it's like, dear diary. (laughs) But (laughs) but that's how it started was cute and pretty and stuff like that. Because then it made me want to like keep writing because I was like, oh, it's pretty yeah right. I love that and it's like a it's a huge thing at the moment like uh 
my 10 year old sister's been making these bullet journals. Have you heard of yeah, those? That's mm. what I used to do. Yeah, that's what yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I loved like, it. Yeah, well, they look so pretty, you know, like I just. I, I know. I almost get jealous I really when I look at them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, nice. So I have you're an doing... agenda, and I, whenever sorry, so no, 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 you go, um, you go, Gabby. I have a, an agenda, you know, like something that somebody gave me uh, for my birthday, and I was like, maybe I should try like this, like you know, bullet journal, or whatever. And I sit down, and I'm like, like. I can write maybe a couple of things, draw a few stars, but like, what else? Like my creativity sometimes like flowers. I always did flowers. Yeah. And then I go on Pinterest and I'm like, how do these people do it? <laughs> yeah. So there was neat. always things I was searching like July. I remember when I did, it was like watermelon because it was like summer. And I was always excited when December came around to make it all Christmas themed. Yeah. And then yeah. January was like fireworks. <laughs> I love oh. that. Okay. So I love that. <laughs> so, you know, you're doing, uh, you know, you're quite high up in, in your sport and you're studying at the moment. Um, yeah. how, do you, how are you finding balancing that kind of life? So um, when I did, like, so I'm, I've just coached gymnastics now, but like when I did it and everything, it was a crazy ordeal and balance and trying to find time of everything because, I did online school. So I basically had to teach myself from eighth grade all the way up to senior year. And oh then God. college, when I came to Gainesville and I started training here um, at a club nearby the campus, that was hard too, because college is like a whole different level mm. of school. And there was actual due dates and teachers and everything like that. So that was really hard to manage. But I eventually got done it. Gymnastics taught me a lot about time management. <laughs> yeah, cool. that, that's for sure. Yeah, I suppose, you know, sports kind of do that many ways. Like, yeah, you're learning these tricks. You're learning how to be, like, really good in one thing. But also yeah. there's so many elements from it that can go into your uh, outside of athletic type life, you know. That's right. really cool. Yeah. So um, can I ask what you're studying in Florida? I'm studying psychology. <laughs> oh wow, that's so cool! Yeah, how are you enjoying so, it? I love it. It's very interesting and fulfilling for me because obviously, like, I am very interested in mental health and mm. the impacts and aspects of it. So my end goal is to be a therapist. So I gotta go through all the psychology courses. So yes, I'm studying psychology. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing! Wow, I didn't, I, I didn't know that was uh, the case. I didn't know how how passionate you were about that. That's real. Uh, that's so inspiring I, to hear. Seeing a therapist and everything is what kind of inspired me, um, hmm. to study psychology and everything like that. Hmm. Because hmm. I wanted to help others how I was helped, and then it's yeah. just really interesting to learn about how the brain works. Yeah, I'm sure. So, Goodness. Yeah, it's it's is it helping you understand better how you were like feeling before, like how you know your struggle your own struggles? Right. Um I I mean I think some aspects it has, but um I like keep referring to my therapist because she knew I like science and stuff like that. So whenever I would see her, for example, like the gratitude thing, she would tell me all the different hormones and chemicals it was like gonna release in my brain so I I had a, a pretty good understanding before I even started you could say but with other things it's it's really changes how you view the world and like oh so that's why I think like that or that's how I see things and because I'm in like a sensory processes class as well oh wow and yeah yeah I'm taking like two psychology classes right now and it's just interesting to learn like why you view the world and why you perceive things not even just like oh I see a flower but when things happen in your childhood how it even affects now mm, yeah yeah amazing that's so yes. cool I remember taking like, a couple oh, so classes in college I'm like that. <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna say that you know uh when I was in college I took like a couple classes they were just requirements you know for my <clears throat> um degree but um it's so cool when you start reading about like what your body can do and like mm -hmm. how 
your brain sometimes can connect things and like cause mm. you to feel things and it's like yeah when you learn the scientific part of it I think it helps you understand a little bit um your yeah. own, your own emotions which is so my mom cool. always yeah my mom always said you know choose to be happy and I was like what are you talking about like there's no <laughs> way I can just decide to be happy mother don't be sad anymore <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, bam, not sad. But I that made me did real like that made me realize that life really is how you react to things. And you know, if you want to let someone or something upset you, then you will. Um, but if not, if that's not the case, then you can just like decide to take a breath and just realize that everything in the end will be okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's nice. I the thing I love to always uh remember if I'm going through any time like period that's causing like a lot of anxiety and stuff like that Mm -hmm. I always think like the problem that I have right now is not going to be my problem in like five years ten years yeah no yeah uh, exactly I think that kind of pairs quite nicely with what you just said like you can choose how you react to that thing at the time uh, and you either remember that reaction or you remember the event that happened, you know? So Yeah, or and then later on, remember the lessons that you learned. Because all the time there's, like, stuff that happens. And I'm like, okay, is this really going to matter in a week? Like, is this mm, yeah. going to matter in even, like, three days? And if it doesn't, then it's not something to oh, be overly concerned with. Totally. Obviously, that puts another, things into perspective. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. So my question for you, you talked about time management. I'm just very Mm. curious because I've heard that athletes in general are very good with it, but also like they have this ability to sort of prepare themselves mentally, especially before a competition. Mm. Like what kinds of things do you do to prepare, to sort of organize yourself? Uh, Now you coach, you, you help, uh, you, you mentioned that you help coach, right? Um, yeah, athletes. so I coach between the ages of four and 18. So that wide range. Cool. Thank you. So uh, that's awesome. So how do you organize like your time? And then how do you prepare, you know, if they have competition and when you competed yourself, like how did you mentally prepare yourself? Because like I am a very, sometimes I'm nervous, you know, I get nervous when, when I speak in public and like, there's like this rush that you go through, you know, right about when you're going to do something like, you know, uh, I don't know, like public or I don't know, at least for me. And I have to sort of like, you know, start preparing myself, but I, it gives me anxiety a little bit. Like, how do you deal with that? So my favorite thing is I, I love making lists, even if it's of random stuff. I just like to make to-do lists grocery list anything like that (laughs) and that always helps me like writing it and seeing what I need to do and planning it and times and dates that always really helps me um even with coaching now I will write out like lesson plans and stuff like that and when I was a gymnast my coaches always wrote lesson plans for us and the day before um for example at competitions there's training days so the day before or getting there we made a plan of this day we're going to focus on this this day we're going to focus on that so that when it comes to the competition you are as best prepared as you can possibly be Mm, that's awesome now that you are like on the other side of the you know of I guess the game per se like now you're helping coach other athletes do you think that being an athlete yourself, has it made you more like empathetic towards your own students? Like how do you approach um, their own struggles? I think with certain things, it makes more empathetic. Cause I'm like, yeah, like that sucks, but you gotta do it. Like, especially <laughs> that. It's like, for example, you know, you're going to get a rip on your hand and I always had to keep going. Like I had like, 10 rips one time and we still had to swing bars for like two hours a day so I'm like Ouch. no if you wanna, these are just like this part of the sport you know everyone says gymnastics is the hardest sport and it truly is just because of how far you push your body to the limits and stuff like that but I am mm-hmm. more I, I try to be empathetic I'm like oh that was maybe too hard but I'm like if you want to get 
a goal, you know, you got to go through it. So it's yeah, not, it's she, never an easy road. It's never the pretty yellow brick road. Yeah, um, no, definitely not. I, I mean, God, I couldn't even imagine training, like doing the bar things with rips on your hands. Like, sorry, yes. I, I have some questions here. Like, what, what do you do to cover your hands up with, with the rips? Is there tape? Well, we Is some kind rips. of yeah. But it's, it's very, it's like this far. So uh, like two inches, if that, that covers your hand, but the rest swings on the bar. Um, and I didn't like wearing tape because it kind of felt slippery to me. So I just had to suck it up. <laughs> oh <laughs> I used my to God. Put, um, new skin to cut, kind of make a layer, but that would come off each turn. So I'd have to reapply it. And that burns very bad. And then Bert Beef has this thing called like hand cell. Um, mm-hmm. I don't even know what it is, but I used to like to wear that on bars because it made it a nice little glide. Yeah. But just hope and pray that you get your assignment done fast, but you don't have to swing a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever really injure like- yourself? Like, yeah. You know- um, I got a lot of injuries, um, a lot of ankles. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to have a really bad shin problem. I had elbow surgery, I, oh, wow. like dislocated ribs, stuff like that. Broken nose, concussions. Oh my god! Oh that my was goodness. a lot. That's always something. I can't believe we've gotten into like forty-five minutes of this conversation. We haven't even touched on the injuries yet. Yeah, it's I like, know. Yeah, a huge <laughs> thing. But I feel like it's a given. It's like, yeah whatever yeah Yeah. I was gonna say that you say it so like nonchalantly you know like oh you know (laughs) I broke my nose my ribs yeah there was bad ones yeah so uh, walk us through a little bit of that because I don't know if you've got a dislocated rib or a a broken ankle broken ankle or just like spray I don't think I have a broken I just like messed it up like it was black and purple and everything oh my god oh your poor mom <laughs> yeah <laughs> the insurance, the insurance was good to me thank god yeah. I had insurance yeah shit yeah, yeah. um so <laughs> in terms of in terms of that side of things like obviously that's going to impact your training if you've got uh, a concussion for instance it's really bad to well is it not so necessarily bad to train but if you hit your head again while having a concussion it can be really bad so in terms of yeah, training through those, yeah what so I when I broke my nose I also got a concussion just of how I hit it yeah and that was really bad like I could barely look at light everything like that um so I was taking a real easy in gymnastics like barely doing anything and then as my head started getting better I started doing more and I slipped and hit my head again. (laughs) So that was really bad. But um, for example, if like when I got my elbow surgery, I focused a lot on things I could do without my elbow. So I got really good at like turns, uh, Mm -hmm. worked on my flexibility and strength. So there's always something that you can work on instead, um, Mm -hmm. as long as your coach are both creative and willing to find something. And my coaches were always really good about that. I was always keeping busy and getting stronger somewhere else yeah awesome that's such a cool way to think about it too you know if you're injured in one place you know focusing on something else or some muscles or whatever that needs some help yeah. so and that could be uh, applied to anything really that oh mindset, totally you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it does <laughs> and with with gymnastics uh, and the injuries that come with it, like you say, there's been so many of them. Do you have a, a physio that you work with or anything like that or had been working with? So when I was um, in Texas, I would go see like a chiropractor, a, mas- a masseuse therapist. For me, yeah. those worked the best as well as I had like foam rollers at home, ice packs, heating pads, like yeah. massage guns, all of that. So not only was I seeing people, but I also had the resources I needed that's fantastic yeah cool that's good mm-hmm. I, I love how you have such a positive outlook on like yeah. injuries because sometimes you know athletes can like go you know um like they become depressed because you know physical therapy sucks or because it limits something or in- interrupts with training or, mm. or simply you just don't go to you know major you know games or whatever so did that ever impede you from or stop you from doing anything like that or, or were you so always there was like... one time 
yeah there was like one time I injured my knee at a competition so I could only do bars and that was really hard Mm -hmm. just because I traveled that whole way to only do one event and get injured and everything like that um I guess the longest injury I had um was probably like my elbow because that was surgery Mm -hmm. and I I really as much as that time period like sucked because I just had surgery um it made me get closer to coaches because I wasn't just training, 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 but there was a lot of times I would stop and talk to them. And I got really close, for example, with Eddie. Um, and he would just, he was always very influential on my gymnastics career because he didn't just coach me as a, a gymnast. He coached me as a whole person and addressed mental aspects, everything like that. So that time period was really great because I got stronger legs and I got bigger splits, but I also got closer to coaches yeah that's good cool yeah and I, I just uh wanted to touch on the injuries one last time because Gabby brought up a really good point about um you know stopping training and, and get, getting depressed about things and that is uh something that happened to me in the end mm-hmm. uh, with my sport oh, no. yeah but it's a it's okay but um in terms of you with the coaching that you're doing now and obviously you're not training six hours a day anymore okay. no it's more yeah. coaching six hours yeah. a day now. exactly <laughs> right okay <It's> <laughs> do you find uh or did you find that when your lifestyle kind of changed from you know being the athlete to being a coach that you had a bit of a change in your your moods and your serotonin your ways of life I guess so for coaching like little babies is extremely stressful and very underestimated like when I first started I was like oh this is gonna be fun but it is very (laughs) stressful and tiring because it's like you have to like keep this like oh good job oh no don't do that like this guy like Disney princess voice yeah and at the end I'm like exhausted and then I get to higher levels and I just get to be like point your toes do this blah 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 but it's a lot (laughs) Like my life is a lot less stressful now that I'm not doing gymnastics. Um, mm. But I do enjoy coaching. It's, it's tiring and I lots of props to my coaches because I know I was exhausting them for sure. But it, it's very fulfilling. Like in the faces, like when they get new skill and just being a part of that whole journey is fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you really ever cool. have to be like the bad guy? Like, because I have such a big issue with being like with Oh, like being authoritarian is that the word authority? like you know ordering people yeah, yeah. like ordering people are like being like the bad you know the bad person like the bad guy you know like do this or what you know yelling at them or stuff like that like do you ever find yourself in situations where you have to be the bad guy I mean there's a <laughs> sometimes you just have to <laughs> like I hate to say it, but there's like some kids that you know three strikes and they're not listening the voice starts getting raised a little bit (laughs) obviously it's not like one thing bam you're out but it's like (laughs) it's like disrespect and everything that's a bit different but yeah um, totally but I I, I'm pretty not I'm hard on them but in a good way like it's constructive it's never belittling or anything like that because I know what that can do so I try not to be like that. I've like learned and take bits of pieces. And I like to say I'm a good blend of every coach I've had. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Equal balance of everything. Because it's not like you can be too soft because then they mm. don't progress and they're not going to be pushed. But then you don't want to be too hard that you're belittling them and everything like that. So it's mm. a, finding yeah. that good balance. And every kid reacts to things different. Some kids, you know, the harder you are on them the better whereas other kids that just like breaks them down so it's Mm. all about learning how different kids react yeah and you must like are you loving the coaching at the moment I love it it's so much fun it's 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 very fulfilling yeah because that's one thing I've definitely noticed like from coaching snowboarding after like not doing it to the level I once was yeah is that when these kids are learning the new tricks or whatever and they they land something and they're like just on this yes. new level of stoke it's just so nice to look at <laughs> and, and like, like you're remember. part of that and it's yeah yeah that's really cool I do love it. 
like a pro oh, nice. proud mama <laughs> yeah like a proud mama. <laughs> and i'm like you go girl yeah. and when they like have a competition they come back and tell me like their scores they're like guess what like guess what coach greg and it, it makes my day i like yeah. to try and be like a big sister especially like the mm. older girls i uh, like the older ones just like someone that they can relate to and come to that's mm. what i also like is when they can come to me with issues yeah. Do they ever come to you with like other types of drama, like boys stuff or like, you know, like I'll things tease that... them about boys if they say anything. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no boys. Don't, don't chase don't the boys. Worry about the boys it. chase you. I'm like, you're focused on gymnastics right now. <laughs> but no, I, Great advice. Really mm. but there's a select few and I'm like, you're telling me too much. Walk away. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. It's it's great. It's always a fun time. It's mm -hmm. good. I and do the parents like talk to you? Like you know, because sometimes parents, you know, I, I'm the reason I'm saying that is because at the moment I'm partially teaching uh, English. I'm, right now I'm in Peru, and sometimes parents just like you know have this image of their kids being at like you know their best or having the best skills or whatever. And sometimes they're not just not there yet. Yeah. so they come to you and they're like I want you to do this you know or mm. like why isn't he or she getting better like do you ever get get that pressure from parents I, I feel very pressured by parents just because like I never want I hate getting in trouble and luckily I like I've never yeah. have or like had a misunderstanding or stuff like that um But whenever I drop kids off, because we always walk them out to the parents, the parents will talk to me. And there's times where I'm like, you know, she wasn't like listening the best. And every time they've always been like understanding, like, okay, we'll work on this. So I've always had a positive relationship with parents. I'm very fortunate. It's always That's funny good. when they like, because I wear like this necklace that with the rings, they're like, wait and I like put two and two together I'm like yeah uh, that's awesome <laughs> yeah or even like kids when they're like oh I'm like oh yeah. she's wearing the rings <laughs> like I yeah. remember like my first day they were like wait is that the Olympic ring I was like yeah they're like oh, no way like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that just gets <laughs> to the And it must be you, like you are this yeah <laughs> yeah well, thank you yeah because I noticed your necklace actually when we first hopped on the call like it it's <laughs> very cool to be able to be wearing that hey like yeah did, we, did a, you have to go a to a special big. shop <laughs> no so a friend of ours owns a jewelry um store or is a jeweler oh. whatever so yeah. he made it for me I was very happy wow but it's that's like, so um, special it's like a title Like yeah. So so mm -hmm. I for example like I've I've gotten a gym membership so now I'm trying just trying to keep this Olympic body or get it back <laughs> I guess I should say whenever I get intimidated I'm like wait just let me put my necklace out I'm like okay I yeah. got it now it's like it's like a, a cape for a superhero it's like the little thing like yeah um, Iron Man has his suit Spider Man has his webs I'm like I got my necklace yeah that's yeah. No, oh, I love sweet. that <laughs> thank so would you say like um you know, now that you're coaching, you're studying, has your mental health been like, you know, not, I was going to say stable, uh, you no, know, has oh, it yeah. been good? Like, has it been like, you know, are you good? Are you going through like ups and downs? Like, how are you feeling now? So it's like completely different um, after the Olympics. And even it still affects me now. Um, you go through that whole okay what now and mm. I've always heard about that happening I was like does that really happen let me tell you it happens it really does happen mm, like you, I yeah. felt like there was a time where I was like what do I do with my life like I'm never gonna live up to anything like that and then I've just learned that this is a new chapter and I have to make the most of it um I still like look back and it's like a weird thing like I look back on what I went through and sometimes I'm like proud and then other times I'm like gosh I like hate that that even happened but yeah. I just have to learn that it did happen and to roll with the punches and but now like I said like I'm a lot less stressed and if anything it's like a different kind of stress it's like school stress and that's a lot mm -hmm. for me easier mm -hmm. to manage than gymnastic stress because it's like just my mind and stuff like my body and stuff like that right. <laughs> yeah I really loved um what you just said there about you know your life 
changing and in, in this what do I do with my life now type yeah. of thing because I, I I sometimes I even come back to that after my degree I'm like what the hell am I doing <laughs> like <laughs> but, and what now yeah okay. yeah exactly but you, you're right you're totally right it's these chapters of your life that you go through and you just got to be super you know I'm always hyped on what's next type of thing and yeah, um, yeah it's really inspiring to hear that from you too thank you appreciate that it's very refreshing too because obviously as an athlete who's already gone to the Olympics it's, it's almost like you reached this super high goal that you had yeah. and, and now there's that pressure of like what else like you obviously have to do something bigger or like do you ever get that do you ever feel that or you know sometimes uh, heard that like from your parents week. oh no never like from my parents or anything like that but sometimes I'm like okay now I gotta like accomplish something else huge in life but for me it's like I always like looked at validation in the gymnastics way but mm -hmm. let me tell you academic validation I strive for that now like working <laughs> mm -hmm. hard and like acing an exam I mean, it's, it's different than going to the Olympics, but it's like, it's still, it's still something. <laughs> it's rewarding. Wow. It's somewhat of a, yes. of a, the score, the score at the end is always yeah, uh, exactly. rewarding to see. It's like on my school's thing, it's called Canvas and yeah. it shows you like the mean. And when I'm above that mean, it's a, it's a good day for me. <laughs> I'm wow. like, <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Oh. Well, I love talking to you, Regan. I feel like we could talk forever. Like, yeah, I know. Totally I was like, whoa, it's already four like... o'clock. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been like... it's early for you guys. <laughs> nine, nine o'clock in the morning over here, but uh, that's oh. all right. About to go for my coffee. <laughs> hey, here is like 3 p.m., so I'm oh, awake. Okay. I'm hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm nice. Oh. But yeah, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you, Regan, like just hearing your story and hearing your journey with gymnastics. It's um really inspiring. And I think people are going to get a lot out of this episode of uh, our conversation. Mm. So thanks for being Thank so open. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. Yeah. I loved it. Cool. Thank All right. you. Well, yeah, I guess uh, have a nice afternoon and maybe chat in the future. Thank you. Yes, for sure. I'm off to work, actually. I love that. Yeah, oh, good for oh, you. you go. All right. Thank you. Well, have All a right. great day. You, you too. too. See you later. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Make sure to tune into next week's episode. We're publishing now weekly on Friday. Follow us on Instagram at anxietyhacks.tv. Thank you.